I was recently accepted into UT Austin's online master of science in computer science program. And today I'm repping the Longhorns and I'm excited to get into some of the reasons why I initially got interested in applying and the application process. So that's what I'm gonna walk through in this video. And to get started, I am super grateful that I got accepted. I got my notification letter just a few weeks ago and ended up deciding to go ahead and enroll since then. My initial interest in the program came from perusing the online website for the program. A few months ago, I would say probably, actually, now that I think about it, it was probably a year ago when I first learned about the program. At the time, I was exploring different options for getting more education on computer science. This was actually before I enrolled at Western Governors University for my bachelor's in computer science. At the time, I was thinking, well, I already have a bachelor's. I don't really think I need another one. I would rather do a master's and get a lot of that background knowledge in computer science and programming through a master's program instead of another bachelor's. So I was looking at different master's programs out there, and I came across UTs where I was like, oh, okay, this is a reputable school, like seriously, super good. And even at the time, Though I didn't know a ton about computer science, I still not, still knew that UT has a really good reputation. And I think indeed it has probably a reputation among uh, as being among the top 10 computer science departments in the country, which is super awesome. All that said, I looked at the program and I got excited like, wow, this could work for my schedule. At the time I was working full time, I was thinking, okay, maybe I could do this online program and work full time concurrently. So I ended up looking through it and it turns out that UT really wants their applicants to have a bachelor's in computer science, or if they don't, then they should have a very strong quantitative and programming background. And then finally, they the applicants need to have gotten passing grades and ideally great grades in six courses. And some of those courses include data structures, algorithms, operating systems, and introduction to programming, things like, or more advanced programming, things like that. And at the time, I didn't have any of those courses. I was thinking through it, well, I could maybe take some of those courses at a community college or a local four-year university and get those prerequisites waived. Although I ended up deciding, you know what, I wouldn't mind getting some of the background in addition to these courses in computing theory, computational science, data science, and also some more background knowledge on programming. All that to say, that was one of the reasons that led me to do a bachelor's instead of a master's at that time. So all that said though, the UT program had been on my mind since then, and I have had in the back burner ever since that time Another thing that was initially interesting to me is that UT, their master's program, has a really low cost. Like the entire program is $10,000, which is super cheap for masters, especially a masters at a super good university. Western Governors University, I, I'm a fan. Obviously, I've made videos about their program and I am grateful for them. They are very inexpensive, which is awesome. but. One thing in the world of academia is that unlike an industry where there's this perception that where you go to college doesn't really matter, in academia that's definitely not true. People do care where you went and where you got your credentials at. If you're doing grad school, people care about your institution and also who you did your research under. So that all matters. And all that to say, my idea of considering UT Austin because they have such a strong reputation and are respected in the academic community was pretty attractive to me as someone who's considering doing more academic work, doing research in the future. Another thing that initially caught my interest is that I saw that they had some really cool classes that are hard to find in other places. Things like introduction to quantum information science, like basically quantum computing, like that's so cool. And also other things like looking at deep learning from 
a more mathematical perspective. Another class I'm super excited to take is Advanced Linear Algebra for Computing. I really like math. I only learned that in college, I think. I wish I had pursued it even more than I did. But the fact that I get to pursue it more now through UT's mathematical heavy CS program is really attractive to me. So I'm super pumped for that. Those are some of my initial interest reasons. And in terms of more specific reasons why now I decided to apply, and for context, it's March 2024, as of the recording of this video, I applied in December 2023. So just for some, or actually, now that I think about it, it was early January 2023, so scratch that. In terms of why I applied in January, some more specific reasons in addition to those initial interest reasons are things like, I right now am open to working in industry and doing software engineering, computational science type work. But more than that, I'm actually more interested as of today in going and doing a, a PhD program and doing research in computer science, some sort of computational biology type thing or some sort of thing incorporating artificial intelligence, machine learning, and health, like biomedical informatics. That sounds really fun to me, and I've done research like that before. Either case, whether industry or research, I think this master's helps and that's why that's one of the reasons why I was like, oh, okay, that that's pretty cool. Just having that on your CV is helpful either way. Another thing is that I really like the price again, but what's cool about that price is that it gives a lot of value for the price beyond just the specific classes. In terms of the classes, there's 10 that you have to take, which is awesome. Uh, so it ends up being $10,000 $10, broken up per 10 classes, $1,000 a class. In addition to the value of those classes themselves, you get to get plugged into a good community of online learners and faculty which are supportive, which is really cool. I also like that there is a pretty good emphasis on only learning things that are cutting edge. We're not learning things that are even 10 years old. We're really learning things that are happening right now at the forefront of quantum computing, at the forefront of networking system. So I like that where you get a lot of value for what you pay for. Another thing for me is that the program is asynchronous so that you don't have to attend live lectures. A lot of the workshops and lectures are pre-recorded so that you can listen to them and watch them at your own pace. You can even do it like double speed or half speed whatever works for you. I wanted to talk a little bit about the application process, what that looked like, and my just specific application stuff. This leads me to think a little bit about some other online master's programs I considered in terms of comparing their application processes. One of the reasons that I liked this program for the application process is that it doesn't require letters of recommendation. I'm grateful to have faculty who I could ask for letters. Although I wanted to just go ahead and easily submit a program or submit an application without having to worry about that. I'm really hoping to save those letters of recommendation for, for later things. And for other programs like Georgia Tech has a fantastic OMSCS, the online masters in computer science there. They have excellent specializations as well. And it's actually cheaper than UT Austin's. In terms of reputation, depending on who you ask, they're either on par or maybe one's a little bit better than the other, but they're both really good. I personally like that UT Austin is a little bit more selective than Georgia Tech, and I also like Texas, I like Austin, so I plan to visit the campus just to hang out in the library, things like that, whereas I don't really have any ties to Georgia personally. so. Like I said, yeah, they don't require letters of recommendation. You can submit some if you'd like. I chose not to, and I got admitted, which I'm grateful for, super grateful for. And the rest of the application was pretty straightforward. I submitted all my official transcripts electronically, 
some I had to mail, like Western governors, they have a sort of weirder transcript thing through the National Clearinghouse, so they don't use parchment. And it, National Clearinghouse is totally legit too. But basically I had them mail an actual physical copy of my transcript to UT. On that note, I haven't actually finished my WGU degree program. And that was one thing that has it made me hesitate from applying to UT because I actually hadn't finished all of the required prerequisites for UT. I think I was able to talk about though in my statement of purpose, like, okay, I am working towards these. On my CV, I listed exactly the courses that I'm gonna be taking in this final term that I'm in now to finish up those, pro, this, uh, those prerequisites. I'm also graduating in May from WGU, so I will have those finished, guaranteed. So I'm grateful, grateful for that. And I mentioned it a little bit, but yeah, there's the transcripts, letters of recommendation are optional. GRE is optional, I didn't submit GRE. And then also there is the CV. For a CV, I super recommend taking the time to make it pretty good. I also recommend highlighting as much academic accomplishments that you can. I also, and then in addition to that, everything that you can list that's quality for computer science related things. Whether you did a research project, whether you created a real substantial product through your undergraduate coursework or through starting a club or ACM club, anything that you did that you want to talk about, an RU, that all is super helpful for going into that CV. CV is curriculum vitae, by the way, it's basically a resume tailored for academic things. Also, there's the statement of purpose. This is what UT wants to see when, in terms of your explanation for why you want to actually do the program, your motivations, your background, your fit. This is a two page maximum document. And I think this is actually, in my opinion, one of the most important, if not the most important part of your application. Obviously the prerequisites need to be met. So in some sense, yeah, that's what really matters. But the statement really goes a long way, in my opinion, to helping the admissions committee get a gauge on your level of readiness, your understanding of the program, the commitment, and also why you're interested. I spent a lot of time on this. I spent probably three weeks really crafting it slowly over time. And by the end, I'm, I'm happy, I was happy with how it turned out. That all got submitted and I didn't have any issues logistically with getting all that in. I ended up deciding just to apply to the CS program. UT has a few other programs that are really cool online masters like data science and artificial intelligence. I ended up deciding though to just go with the CS program. That was the one that I wanted to focus on. So the rest of the application process was very, very smooth, straightforward. And in terms of the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is starting the program and my next steps. I'll be starting in August, 2024, and I feel great about getting started. I'm hoping to take one of the three courses I mentioned earlier in this term. I'm either advanced computing, advanced linear algebra for computing, quantum information science, or deep learning. I'm really hoping for one of those. I'm only gonna be taking one class, mainly because I work full time. I'm also doing other coursework at another school, so there's a lot going on in my plate, but I, I know I can handle it. So just one course at UT. And yeah, I'm feeling great about it. I also think that I may be applying to PhD programs later this year. And if that ends up happening and I get accepted, then I'm hoping that my UT master's credits will just transfer over to that program. I probably at that point wouldn't finish the master's. What's nice though is if I don't get accepted, then I will just continue with the UT program until I finish. So I think either way, Either way will be good, but I'm super excited to jump in and join the community of UT Longhorns. So yeah, super pumped, go Longhorns. So thanks for watching. I'm happy to answer any questions about anything related to UT. Talked about a lot of different stuff in this video.
Hope it was helpful to someone, and thanks for watching.